in Afghanistan, we've just had a runoff election. There is absolutely no question that Ghani won that election, probably 60-40. But Karzai and Daudzai, who is the Minister of the Interior who is responsible for security of the balloting process and so forth, they are Iranian assets and they have basically thrown their support to Abdullah, who is a 100% Tajik person. He is funded and controlled by Iran and he has absolutely no prospects of doing anything other than destroy Afghanistan. And so we're now going into a counting period. During this counting period, I anticipate that with U.S. government complicity, the government of Afghanistan is going to be allowed to throw the election to Abdullah. And so I'm calling on everybody who cares about the 12 years of blood, treasure, and spirit that we have wasted in Afghanistan, or that we have invested in Afghanistan, to honor that sacrifice, it is absolutely essential that the U.S. government be required to expose the fraud and ensure that if indeed Ghani was elected legitimately, that he be installed as president of Afghanistan. Uh, I, as a citizen, am outraged to see that the U.S. Embassy has canceled polls, which are an essential means of detecting fraud. And the way this works is that when you poll people before and after an election, and your voters say essentially that they voted for Abdullah in the single digits, and then you get double-digit votes for Abdullah as counted, that is a surefire indicator of massive fraud that has been enabled by Karzai and Daudzai. Um, so I believe Afghanistan is on the verge of a major transition. I believe that Ghani is the only honest, uncorrupt candidate between the two. And I believe that although Ghani has his flaws, as all candidates do, that the only hope for Afghanistan lies in a future in which Ghani is installed, the bilateral security agreement is signed, and we help the Afghans get back in control of their future. And I agree with the Taliban. The Taliban has to come back into uh, the government. The government has to be decentralized. We have to allow the provinces to elect their own governors. We have to uh, stop this, this criminal corrupt practice that Karzai has installed over the last 12 years. Um, and I believe Ghani will do that. So I'm calling on the public to hold its own government accountable and to hold the Afghan government accountable for counting the votes as they actually were made. God bless Afghanistan and God bless America and let the truth come out. Last, All right. Could, could you give us a nutshell about what is going on in Afghanistan? I mean, I, I was in the Ukraine. They always referred to uh, Afghanistan as their Vietnam. And then you look at, you know, people referring mostly to the poppy production and how heroin uh, sales well, went up, know, back up. Well, you know, to give the Taliban credit, there was no opium in Afghanistan until the U.S. and CIA reinstalled it. And, in fact, opium is Wall Street's liquidity. Uh, this is something that Michael Rupert, who recently suicided himself, and perhaps he was incentivized because... Um, his family gets the life insurance and uh, he may have been told that either he suicided himself or, or he would be murdered and his family would be murdered with him. Um, drugs are Wall Street's liquidity and Elizabeth Warren is on to this. Uh, the US government is complicit in money laundering of drug profits and in fact elements of the US government run drugs, DEA, FBI, CIA, elements of those agencies run drugs as part of their off-budget uh, uh, operations to raise money to do things. The, Israels, the Israelis run drugs in the United States as part of their off-budget exercises. Um, so what's going on in Afghanistan? Is it a complicated country that has self-governed at the tribal level for centuries, was totally screwed by the British in the Treaty of Gandamak, which essentially created the Durand Line which pushed Pakistan up into Afghanistan and has divided the Pashtun tribes. And this has implications for water management, for tribal uh, uh, mobilization, for agriculture, for trade, and so forth. What's happening in Afghanistan today is that Iran, which, and people forget, but Herat, which is the capital of the province of Herat in Afghanistan, in the 15th century, Herat was the capital of the Persian Empire which is what Iran is the inheritor of. And Dari, which is a variation of Farsi, 
is one of the two major languages in Afghanistan. So what we have in Afghanistan today is the potential, particularly if Abdullah is installed as a fraudulently elected candidate, we have the potential for Iran controlling a wealthy north and west and the Pashtuns being placed under the oversight of a very complacent Pakistan that has absolutely no interest in the health of Afghanistan or the Pashtuns, but wants to protect the Durand line. Okay? Um, now, I agree with the Taliban, who have said that Afghanistan is wealthy beyond measure, with water and minerals and agriculture. Saffron now is the newest product that is just the rage uh, in India. I agree with the Taliban. Afghanistan does not need international donor support particularly since 90% of the international donor support is never actually delivered to Afghanistan. There's a wonderful book uh, called Fixing Failed States, and there's some wonderful videos in which Ghani outlines how, let's take $1 billion, it gets given to, it's outsourced. And at each outsourcing level, through the United Kingdom, then over to Turkey, then from Turkey to some others in, 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 in Central Asian countries, at the end of the day, less than $100 million gets delivered in Afghanistan. And usually that's delivered in a way that is so corrupt and dysfunctional that you might as well not have given that $1 billion. All right? So what's going on in Afghanistan today is we have a choice between perpetuating a dysfunctional donor system and a Western control and or Iranian control or letting the Afghans finally take charge of their own destiny. And eventually, I'm not sure I see the Durand line pushed back, but I certainly believe that the Pashtun tribes should not have a border to contend with. And I believe that Ghani is the only uncorrupt candidate, and he is the guy who can unite the tribes. And also, Ghani has Dostum. Dostum, by the way, was not guilty of the Taliban container massacre. That was Abdullah, all right? But Atta, with funding from Iran, has spread a number of lies, and one of those lies is that he has assigned blame to Dasta. My friend Robert Young Pelton has done an entire website. Pelton was there when they opened the containers, and Pelton knew where Donnie had been on the day of the alleged uh, massacre. Um, he's created an entire website that exonerates Dostum. Dostum is a man of honor. And he is a man, he's one of the only people in Afghanistan that actually knows how to fight, knows how to mobilize villages, knows how to tell the truth, and how to explain to villages, this is why we have to do X, Y, and Z, and this is why it's for the benefit of the greater good. So what's going on in Afghanistan is we're at the, t at the end of 12 years of American ignorance and fumbling about. And yet, despite all of our mistakes, we're on the verge of a historic turnaround in Afghanistan that we are about to blow. And as best I can tell, we're blowing it because the Americans want two things from the Iranians, and they're willing to throw Ghani under the bus for them. The first thing they want from the Iranians is a highly publicized nuclear deal that will come to closure on the 20th of July. The final count in Afghanistan is going to be announced on the 22nd of July. I am absolutely certain that if the Americans get their Iranian deal, they will allow Karzai to steal the election on behalf of Abdullah. That's why the U.S. Embassy canceled the polls. The second thing the Americans want from the Iranians is control of the Sunni faction in Iraq that is making the Americans look bad for having broken Iraq. Well, newsflash. Dick Cheney, when he told his 935 lies that led us into Iraq, where we've spent $2 trillion or more, Dick Cheney did not know that Saddam Hussein was a Sunni and that a Sunni minority was controlling a Shiite majority. The United States of America was played by Iran into doing very foolish things in Iraq. We broke it. And unlike Colin Powell's dictum, you break it, you fix it, we broke it and we're walking away from it. So for me, Afghanistan is the hub of a revitalized Central Asian, South Asian prosperity sphere. The Silk Road is being rebuilt from China to Turkey and from that China-Turkey axis down through Iran. The uh, port of Chahabar in Iran is vastly more efficient, less corrupt than the Chinese-built port of Gwandar uh, in Pakistan. And so you now have a trade axis between India and, uh, 
and Afghanistan. And you have essentially the potential for a new economic zone that brings China, Russia, Iran, and India together with Afghanistan as the center for what should be, I believe, uh, one of the major success stories in economic development in the 21st century. Hmm. And we're about to blow it because if Abdullah is fraudulently elected, what this really means is that we're perpetuating the Panjiri uh, klepto uh, kleptocracy. And also Abdullah will be dead within 180 days, which will throw the country into civil war. Uh, so from where I sit, hmm. the U.S. government is throwing Ghani under the bus on the basis of lies and misperceptions, and it is um, dishonoring all of our dead, all of our wounded, and all of our public investments in Afghanistan. And I think that's wrong. So as a concerned citizen, I believe that we should be demanding that the U.S. government do everything in its power to ensure that the votes that were made yesterday are counted honestly. And if they're counted honestly, I'm absolutely certain that Ghani won. There are uh, a number of posts at Phi Beta Iota by Robert Young Pelton, by Andrew Garfield, and by myself uh, that explain all of this in detail. Uh, so I would love to see the public take an interest in Afghanistan because at root, Afghanistan is a microcosm of our failure as a country. And I believe that what happens in this count in Afghanistan is a very strong indicator of whether or not the public agency can be restored in the United States of America in the next five years.